Juan Ramon Matabalesteros, born January 12, 1945, also spelled Matabalesteros, is a former major narcotics trafficker who has been credited with being one of the first to connect Mexican drug traffickers with the Colombian cocaine cartels. This connection paved the way for a major increase in the amount of cocaine smuggled into the United States during the late 1970s and throughout the 1980s. Mattel was indicted for operating several major cocaine smuggling rings in United States in the early 1980s. He was also one of the narcotics traffickers accused of the kidnap and assassination of American DEA agent Enrique Camarena in 1985. In 1988 Mattel was arrested from his Honduran residence in a controversial operation by the Honduran and American governments and taken to the United States, where he stood several trials for his drug smuggling activities and his part in the kidnap and murder of Enrique Camarena. He was found guilty of drug smuggling, and of participating in the kidnapping, but not the murder, of Camarena. In 2017, his conviction in the Camarena kidnapping was overturned on the basis of flawed forensic evidence. A new trial was ordered, but in 2018 the prosecution decided to drop the charges. Mata remains in prison, serving a life sentence for his drug sentence at the United States Penitentiary, Canaan, a high-security federal prison in Pennsylvania. Early career details of Mata's early life and career are uncertain. According to a website put up by his family, he was born in Tegucigalpa, the second of four children. A number of newspaper sources claim that Mata immigrated illegally to the United States as a teenager and was deported several times, returning each time under a different name. In 1970 he was convicted of entering the country on a false passport and confined at the federal prison camp in Eglin, Florida. He escaped from the camp the following year. In 1974 Mexican authorities arrested Mata for selling 10 kilograms of cocaine. He spent a year in prison, and was suspected of killing two other prisoners while incarcerated. 1980s Drug U.S. Smuggling Operations and Indictments In the early 1980s, Mata was involved with major cocaine smuggling operations. In 1984, he was indicted for his role in a Van Nuys smuggling ring. The discovery of the ring in 1981 resulted in the seizure of 114 pounds of cocaine and $1.9 million in cash, and based on ledgers found with the drugs, prosecutors later estimated that the ring had generated $73 million in just nine months. In 1985, Mattel was again indicted for his role in a major cocaine smuggling ring operating in Arizona and Southern California. The ring was discovered in 1984, resulting in the seizure of about a ton of cocaine and $7.8 million in cash. Involvement in Camarena Kidnap Murder Soon after the February 1985 kidnap murder of U.S. DEA agent Enrique Camarena, Mattel was suspected of involvement and he was later indicted for his part in the kidnapping. According to writer Elaine Shannon, Mattel was actually located in Mexico City several days after Camarena's kidnapping, but his arrest was delayed by Mexican authorities and he managed to flee the country. U.S. law enforcement continued to track Mata, and in April 1985, they traced him to the Colombian city of Cartagena. At the D's request, Mata was arrested by the Colombian government. In March 1986, while extradition proceedings were still underway, Mata escaped from prison, according to some accounts by bribing prison authorities. Later that year, Mata returned to his native country of Honduras. Arrest and removal to U.S. The Honduran Constitution prohibited the extradition of Honduran citizens and for two years Honduran authorities rejected U.S. requests to extradite Mata. Finally, in April 1988, Honduran police arrested Mata and put him on a plane to the Dominican Republic. The Dominican government then put him on a flight to Puerto Rico with United States Marshals, who arrested Mata when they reached United States territory. The day after Mata's extradition, 1,000 to 2,000 students from the National Autonomous University in Tegucigalpa marched on the U.S. Embassy to protest. During the protests, which lasted for two days, the embassy was set on fire, and five students were killed. 
conviction and incarceration like other notable players in the Camarena case, Rafael Caro Quintero, Ernesto Fonseca Carrillo and Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, Mattel was eventually convicted as one of the masterminds behind the 1985 kidnapping, torture and murder of USDEA agent Enrique Camarena in Guadalajara, Mexico. Further, Mattel was later convicted for operating an importation and cocaine distribution ring in Tafanez, California. Mata appealed his conviction several times. Finally, in 1995, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit found that the United States Supreme Court, in a 1992 ruling on another defendant in the same case, had upheld the prosecution of a fugitive who was brought to the United States by kidnapping rather than extradition. Mata also appealed on the grounds that he was beaten and burned with an electric stun gun while being transported to the United States. A federal judge in Los Angeles had previously found the evidence for his claims inconclusive, and the Court of Appeals declined to overturn that ruling. Mata is currently being held at the United States Penitentiary, Canaan, a high security federal prison in Pennsylvania. Mata's role in the Guadalajara cartel Several writers have claimed that Mata played an important role in the formation of the Guadalajara cartel, brokering some of the earliest deals between Colombian cocaine suppliers and Mexico-based smugglers, and starting Mexican smugglers in the business of transporting Colombian cocaine into the U.S. by 1975. Mata had formed an alliance with the Mexican smuggler Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, and with them the Guadalajara cartel began to take shape. By the late 1980s, Mata had become extremely wealthy and employed thousands of people in the businesses he owned. Mata also possessed investments in coffee, tobacco, spice, cattle, and dairy operations and founded several agricultural and construction firms in Honduras. A U.S. Court of Appeals estimated that Mata and Felix Gallardo were pulling in more than $5 million per week from their drug trafficking activity alone, and these businesses helped Mata launder much of these illicit earnings. In 1982, DEA agents reported that Mata had paid $50 million to Bolivian and other Latin American officials to protect his narcotics operations from law enforcement harassment. Mata Ballesteros and the Contras a United States Senate investigation found that an air transport company controlled by Mata was used by the U.S. government to supply the anti-government Contra rebels in Nicaragua. According to the Kerry Committee report, the Honduran airline SETCO was the principal company used by the Contras in Honduras to transport supplies and personnel for the Honduras base FDN, one of the earliest Contra groups, carrying at least a million rounds of ammunition, food, uniforms and other military supplies for the Contras from 1983 to 1985. According to a 1983 U.S. Customs report that the Kerry Committee report cites, SETCO Aviation is a corporation formed by American businessmen who are dealing with Meta and are smuggling narcotics into the United States. Dismissal of Camarena Kidnapping Charges Mata Ballesteros was originally charged with participating in the kidnapping, but not the murder, of DEA agent Enrique Camarena. The first basis for this charge was testimony from Hector Cervantes Santos, who was in charge of security for a cartel attorney. Cervantes testified that Ballesteros was present when the Camarena kidnapping was discussed at the attorney's house. The second basis was testimony from FBI forensics agent Michael Malone that hair and fiber evidence tied Matna to the house where Camarena was held. Cervantes Santos later recanted and re-recanted his testimony several times. Based on this matter filed for a new trial, but a hearing in 1998 found that Cervantes' recantations were not reliable. In 2014, however, the Department of Justice Inspector General determined that Malone's forensic methods were not reliable. Mata filed for a new trial again, and in 2017 Judge John Kronstadt vacated Mata's convictions on the kidnapping charges, ordering a new trial. In December 2018, the prosecution announced that it would drop the kidnapping charges since Mata was already serving a life sentence without parole for drug smuggling. References